So today I'm pouring a camouflage round circle with camouflage colors that I just chose pictures of from Google. I'm going to mix this Hauser Dark Green, which is a deco art paint. And I've got a kind of a chocolate brown, a pistachio green that's really bright. A really, really pale, pale green. A tan color, which will be my neutral. I had mixed up that medium green that you see off to the left. It's kind of a grassy green. And I'm adding just a hair of black to my Hauser green. I want it to be really dark green. Everything with my ratio is 1 to 1 paint to Floetrol by Flood. And it's latex based. You can always go over. And flow trawl, you can do more flow trawl if you want to. So you'll just mix this up and um, stir it up really well. You want the consistency like melted ice cream or warm honey, and it just kind of falls into the surface of the paint, but not drippy and not thick. I'm going to pour everything in a five ounce cup. It's got a little fingerprints on the outside, but it's clean. And I've added OGX to the other colors. I'm using OGX Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Hair Serum. The specific ingredient in it is dimethicone as the first ingredient, and that's what causes the magic cells. Uh, some of the other bottles might have silicone in them, and they've been actually probably in the bottles for quite a while. I got a dropper at probably Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to take one drop out of the dropper and mix it into the paint. You don't have to stir like crazy, just a few times is good. So I'm going to do a traditional dirty pour. Typically I start with white, but uh, I'm not using white, so my tan will be my neutral, even though it does, everything has silicone or OGX in the bottles as well. And because I'm using bottles, the, the, um, the, it's going to have smaller cells because of the small opening that it's being poured through. And with the dirty pour, you can layer colors on top. You can totally let them sink into the other colors. That's totally up to you. I like to switch it up and let some sink in and some not. Some, because they are a little bit thicker than others, will lay on top and some don't. Even if you pour up high or if you squirt in, and then you can also just layer on top with the squirt bottle. There's multiple ways to do it. It's going to all turn out differently every time you do it. All right. So I'm ready to uh, pour. I've got a silicone mat, and on underneath that is a puppy pad with the plastic side up and the cotton side is face down. If you want to save any paint drips and let them dry to use them for paint skins or to make jewelry with, you want it to be on the plastic side so you can peel it off. And immediately you see the, uh, the beautiful cells already starting to form. I never have any issues getting cells, even with paints that have been in the bottles for up to six months or a year. Some people ask, how long do they store? And the kind of bottles I use with the uh, screw-on lids will store indefinitely. I don't use heat for uh, cells, but I do use it usually to, just to pop the air bubbles. You could actually do this by blowing on it with your breath. But this is just a way not to disturb the surface of the paint is with uh, a heat torch or a heat gun. Again, this is Flood Flow Troll.
That's a quart for about six or seven dollars at Lowe's or Home Depot. And the gallon is about fourteen dollars and it goes a long way. So I've got this on two cups, but you can you can also kind of just let your painting fall like that. You can blow out with your breath whatever you need to do to pop the air bubbles. It, but you don't have to be able to have a heat torch in order to do this. I ordered these on Amazon. They're in my Amazon link. And uh, there's a three pack for about $22 or $23. So they average out to about $7 a piece. And I do a lot of these angel paintings. And also, um, they're great for clocks. If you choose to do clocks. And they're about a quarter to a third of an inch deep. So they're very solid. They don't warp like wood does. So I really, I really like them a lot. So basically right now, I'm just going to stretch and then decide which way I want to go with tilting off. This is kind of the way I do it carefully to say, hey, I don't like this area. And then I kind of decide which way I'm going to tilt from how I like the color areas. I'm not taking it over the edge yet. I'm just getting it right up to the edge. this silicone mat because I really don't want to keep the drips on this one, I don't think. Okay, so I've got a little bit too much of this yellow green right here, but I like the brown, so I'm going to try to shift it back this way, but I'm going to take it this way first and let it just slightly go over the edge so that my sides are covered. let it drift back this way. And I am going to let this yellow green color kind of pour off. So this automatically covers your edges. I'm going to take it off a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring it back a bit. I've got a lot of this tan color and I don't really want it either. So I'm just kind of sticking my finger in to take out some. I can even drop a little and put it back on a cup. If there's any area that you don't like, you can manipulate it. So like right here, I don't have much yellow green. totally put like a little squirt there and there. Maybe a drop of brown. Put a little bit of this minty color here. And then this grassy green. And then just take my stick and kind of just drag. Uh, you could totally take something rounded. Like this is a deflated balloon. It's got a little point. I could take that and just dip it, pick it back up, and that'll kind of intermingle some color there. Some areas feel too much the same color. I'm 
and also I put down a little green and a lighter green and I drag through it and that'll do some uh, shape changing too. Just add a little brown there. So I think, I think I'm pretty good because this is going to be an angel painted on it. It's going to have his name on it. So I like the fact that it has a darker area up here. That's probably where I would put his name on top of that. The angel would be here and his wings would come down. Or, you know, I might switch it around a bit, but um, I think I'm pretty good. The other thing when you're doing a round is to take your fingers and go around, even with canvases go around the edge of the bottom of the piece get those drips as best you can and you see when you run your fingers through paint it turns to mud so just be really careful with that as far as on the surface where your artwork is going to be and obviously check for all your sides to make sure there's paint on it but I think I'm done with this one so this is my camouflage Piece that will become an angel. He was very much into hunting, so that's the, uh, the camouflage colors. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will show maybe a later um, embellishing video where I embellish this particular pour. I've done lots of those and I'm not going to do really any more along these lines, but since this is a male angel, I will do a video on that so you can see what it looks like. So I'll do that in another week or so. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out all the links below the video where it says show more. And on your mobile devices and so forth, the down arrow. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.